Welcome to Nashville North Studios. We're here in the studio today to uh, chat with Arlene Grosh and talk about her paintings. Uh, here's a picture of Arlene today and a little bit of her story, which if you were in, you've already read that. We're gonna talk about Arlene today, but before we do that, we're going to look and see what we have here on the walls for those of you who could not come in in person. You can see the walls are filled with color and excitement. Arlene has literally exploded on the canvas with her ideas and energy, which is not common for someone who has not been painting for a long time. Arlene painted early in her career, had a life, what we'll talk about, very exciting life. And uh, in January of this year, during our shutdown in COVID, she began to paint again on canvas in large gestures, truly an American abstract painter who, as you can see in the far right corner, has explored other mediums, wood. This is an early painting. We'll talk about those. Hello, Arlene. <laughs> Hello. And uh, here's more of her work on this wall. We have different sizes, all, all on canvas, some framed. Some are uh, gallery wraps. Over here in the corner, an early work done in fabric, which has its own story. And uh, these beautiful pieces here. The one on the top always reminds me of a party. I don't know why, but it does. Now you'll see also we have some things hanging on the ceiling. That's a nod to Yayoi Kusama's Infinity Room. And our group show this month was entitled, Inspired by Yayoi Kusama. So uh, we have some nods in the studio. Look at that, you can get lost in it, but you can always find your way around the canvas, a way in and a way out. What a wonderful journey. So now we're going to set the camera down and we're going to have a chat with Arlene. I might have to move this over a little bit. Oops. Stay with me. Make sure your drama mean is ready. to check and make sure that's right. On the other side of the window. Here I go. Be right back. doesn't want to stay steady, so bear with me a second. Whoops, there we go. We need a camera person, do you think? That would go, I guess it's difficult doing it all by yourself. Well, sometimes, mostly all the time. You're doing many jobs, as I know you do, here in the gallery. Well, that's pretty good. The chin's on with you, but it's fine. Okay, so let's chat here about Arlene. Arlene was a Jersey girl 
born in Jersey, raised in Jersey, and mostly schooled right nearby, if not in Jersey. Around the state. But you've lived a lot of places. And traveled all over the world. All over the world. And um, you married a fine young man who was going to be a doctor. Yep. Yes, and who took you on adventures with his work when he was in the service. True. True. Took us to Heidelberg, Germany for two years. Wow. Wonderful, wonderful place to live. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But at a difficult time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because the war had just ended. Is that? No, Vietnam was rapid, wine getting larger and larger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, Heidelberg was a safe uh, place to be. You had your couple of children while you were there. We had two children. We brought two children gotcha. over and we brought another one night, eight and a half months in oh, the womb. Oh, in the womb, almost ready to come, but wanted to wait for New Jersey. Yes, yes. wanted to be a born in America. Born in America. So you came back here after Heidelberg. Um, you were in Boston, New Haven, Connecticut, and Atlantic City, Margate. Yes. And then Northfield. Yes. Yes, so made the rounds, settled there as a young family in the same house, and you're still in the same house today. Well, we moved to Margate, and within six months, we found this mm -hmm. old, old home started yes. in 1790, mm -hmm. and we fell in love with it. We knew that had to be our home, mm -hmm. and we bought that and moved to, and we've been in that home. It's the only home we've ever owned. Yeah. Plus, it had lots of room for the kids to play. It was wonderful, yes. and thank God my husband is incredibly handy mm -hmm. and talented, or we've been lost because... He's been maintaining it for 60 years. So while you were there, you had the children, you uh, were doing some creative pursuits. Um, you knew you had creativity in you and you began to paint on canvas. Yes. Yes. And tell us a little bit about your story, about your great effort to paint you were in Margate, and you had your paintings on display, and what happened? I went to do several of the boardwalk art shows or Margate art shows in the, in the, on the beach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like most, I rarely sold one. Mm -hmm. um, and then this gentleman came up when we were all ready to pack up, walking down the beach. And he looked at my paintings and he walked around and he said, how much for the whole booth? Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather. And he bought every painting in the booth. I did ask him why. And he said he owns hotels mm -hmm. and he prefers to have uh, a fine art mm -hmm. rather than prints. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the rooms, and so that's what he bought it for. Right, but we don't know where those paintings are today, do we? No, we don't. I know one of them. Oh. It ended up in an elevator leading up to his own private quarters. Mm -hmm. So that made me feel and good. And was that in Atlantic City? Yes. Okay, so it was a hotel possibly in Atlantic City. Well, that was his own residence and mm -hmm. at the top of, of, of a hotel there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. So... You were busy raising the children, painting on this and that, and exploring different things, and you decided you wanted to go to law school. Yes. Burning was, desire to go. A friend called me up, and she said, how would you like to go to law school with me? And I said, you're crazy. I have three little kids, and the law schools are an hour away. And she said, well, and I said, I'm too old. I'm 33. And she said, what are you going to, how old will you be in three years if you don't go to law school? So I decided to go and I used that line on 
many of my older clients as the years went on. Mm -hmm. So even if you go or you don't go, you're still going three years down the road, you're still exactly. going to be that age. Exactly. Yeah. So why not yeah. go for it? Carpe Just diem. Go for it. Carpe diem. Go yes, for it. Go Seize for the it. day. Yes. Yes, that's wonderful. You had a, a great career in law as a defender of women and a defender yeah. of people who needed protection. Yeah. Yeah. From not only the bad guys, but from our own government. Well, not the bad guys in terms of criminal law. Mm -hmm. I did all civil law, mm -hmm. but the defendants were the wrongdoers in my view mm -hmm. and worth the fight for those cases. Mm -hmm. I know you changed a lot of lives locally Thank and you. you're greatly applauded for that. I, I, I meet former clients mm -hmm. and most of them became friends. Yes, well, they would have to be. They would yeah. have to be. They're so grateful. And they tell me how it changed their lives. Mm -hmm. So that's very rewarding. Proof is in the pudding, right? Yeah. Wonderful. So your kids are all grown now. Yes, they are. And they have their own lives and careers. And they're doing well. And they're applauding you <laughs> for your career because after your law school and then you retired and then you started in polymer clay yes. in the mix and then in january of 2021 you i went for it again <laughs> you went for it again big bold i had had a feeling for two decades mm -hmm. that I wanted to go back to painting. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted to paint large. Mm -hmm. And so I suddenly became very realistic and matter of fact, and where am I gonna put all the paintings if I paint them? And I have some physical issues. Mm -hmm. It will be difficult to do that. Polymer clay, I can sit down and it works small. And all of these many, many reasons I didn't do it mm -hmm. until January of 2021. Yeah. And then I said, can I say it for on YouTube? I can. <laughs> the hell with it. Yeah. And I just started to buy some large canvases and paint. Mm -hmm. And also, I also was pretty... I knew I wanted to be serious about it. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was starting to paint seriously at 82. Mm -hmm. So I started immediately to take lessons with someone who does have an academic background, an art academic background that I never had. Mm -hmm. So I met through Nashville North Gallery, I met Barry Pizetsny, and we really were on the same page. Mm -hmm. And he became my teacher, mm -hmm. and we we got together initially, but then over Zoom, three times a week for two and three hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And in between the times, I painted, so he would have work for me to, you know, to critique. Mm -hmm. Such a wonderful critique, mm -hmm. and um, I really was very, very uh, committed. And then. The magic happened, and you called me and asked, would I like to have a one-woman show? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, that blew my mind. And here we are. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? It is. You it's... take that first step, and it's in anybody's life when they're going to take a step. There's hesitation sometimes, and there's those of us who leap into the deep end of the pool. I have... <laughs> Yes. And that's what you did. That's what I did throughout my law career. Yes. That's what I did going to law school. Yes. I mean, you know, it was a commitment. That's your style. Yeah. yeah. And so Go for it. now I jump into it. And yes. I jump into it. Yes. And then I had, I, I was talking to one of my sons and I was saying, wow, these large canvases, they are so expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, what do I know? But then... And now I get emotional. My son, a couple of weeks later, 
a big can, a big truck pulled up, mm -hmm. and a man with a big dolly brought this package wrapped up, and inside were sixty canvases, most of them very large. Mm -hmm. And I called my son and I said, what did you do? Yeah. Oh my God. And he said, because he's been in the art business all of his adult life, and he had canvases, he said, in his warehouse. So he said, I have these canvases that are just awful. I'm never gonna sell them anyway. And he and his helper, they stripped all of the paintings off and he had a big roll of canvas and he taught his helper how in between them they did a wonderful job stretching all these large canvases. And then all of a sudden I have no excuse not to just keep painting and painting mm -hmm. and painting. Mm -hmm. But he's not the only one in my family who helped make this show happen. My husband, mm -hmm. my dear George, mm -hmm. a husband of 61 years, um, he built many of the frames. Mm -hmm. And my son Jim, um, who became a woodworker when he retired. Mm -hmm. He built many others. So I have so much support from yes. my dear You're surrounded, family. surrounded. By love. Yes. yes. Yeah. And probably uh, they were so happy to do it because you gave so much to them, you know, as, well, as mothers do. And... Uh, but don't always get they the don't. expenditure yeah. back. Yes, yes, but a lovely surprise. Yes. yes, then I had one more big surprise, and my youngest, who's a judge out in California, mm -hmm. has this gorgeous, gorgeous home in San Diego, and he said, Mom, I want that painting. Could I buy that? Well, of course, you could buy it from me. Yeah. So he took it, we took it out of the frame, mm -hmm. he rolled it up, he just flew home to San Diego. He got a wonderful, wonderful framer there who stretched it again, built a beautiful new frame, and now it's hanging in his very modern, very brand new San Diego home. Mm -hmm. So that that's an emotional support. It's a tribute. Well, he says he's serious. He and his husband, they really want that painting mm -hmm. in that prominent spot in their home. Mm -hmm. And that made me feel like, wow, that plus your support, your encouragement, and Barry's encouragement huh. really, really made it made me feel like I could do it. Well, but you can't, um, you, you were the one, you were the spark. We can't get the fire started without the spark. <laughs> and you have had this spark in you for a while. I could see it in your jewelry. Yeah. So we're grateful that it, you finally caught on fire fully and now you're here and we're talking. Yes. Yes. So let's see what else we want to uh, touch uh, on here. Uh, do you want to talk about um, your broad movements that you use in the paintings? Yes. I t well, for me, I love the big canvas mm -hmm. because I love to be able to make big gestures. Mm -hmm use lots of paint mm -hmm. and create real movement. Mm -hmm. I think I will have that. It's more difficult for me to do that in a small canvas. Yes. It can be done, mm -hmm. but it's, um, I just enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. And then that gesture tells me what the painting is telling me to do next. Mm -hmm. The colors tell me, the movement tells me, the layer after layer after layer, sometimes mm -hmm. it takes a long time till that painting gives me a message and mm -hmm. says, okay, it's finished. Are you one of those people who pictures the painting before you begin? No, not at all. No. I have a canvas. Sometimes I have an idea a little bit of the colors I want to work mm -hmm. with. But beyond that, no, mm -hmm. it's not planned. We were talking about earlier uh, before we started this interview about uh, some people uh, paint over a white canvas. They want to get rid of that white 
In your case, sometimes you get rid of it with black. Yes. Or you get rid of it with another color or maybe right. a couple colors at the same time. A variety, but usually mm -hmm. the first layer to is usually all mostly One warm color. colors mm -hmm. or mostly cool colors, mm -hmm. but variety within that. And then you build on that. And then I build on that, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So uh, is there anyone in particular you would like to talk about? And I can pick up the camera and we could uh, uh, go to that well, piece. Well, but you know, what I would love to do okay. is show you where it started. Okay. And would you like this piece? And that's on this, this painting. All right. I only have a few. Mm -hmm. of the paintings that I did then mm -hmm. uh, that have survived one way or the so other. So you have this right here, it will show Okay. The camera. So uh, Judy came over to my house a couple of days ago and she looked at this painting on the wall and she liked it and I asked her who did it and if she knew who did it and she didn't know. No. So I guess, and, and the truth is I did this 50 years ago. I feel like it's got the same energy and it's a lot of the same color that I still love to work in today. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's, I think there's connection between that. Absolutely, the, the line, you can, I can see those lines in some of your other pieces, the colors, the way the painting's laid out. They all speak to each other. Yeah. Yeah. But what I also wanted to say is that for me, when you have a need to be creative, and I think we all do, mm -hmm. but when you actually let that need to be creative take over a lot of space in your life, mm -hmm. your, can, your creative genius your creative juices at least, they're going to come out in many different ways and many different mediums. At least for me, that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I, um, I always was afraid of big woodworking machines. And so I went to Penland Craft School down in Virginia and I took a two-week class in woodworking and I just loved it. Um, and so I made, this was my, I will say first and only one of only two um, pieces that I made carved out of wood. Took the blanks, the, bang, uh, the uh, flat planks and planed them and joined them and learned all that. And I created this one. But years later, my husband again, being supportive, he made up several um, uh, castings. Castings, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, out of plaster and also out of glass, uh, because he's a glass worker. Um, and and I did them in different ways, using material or paint, mm -hmm. as in here. You adorned them. I, I did. say that you I, adorned this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it has texture too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that was a wonderful sideline. But um, this is another. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll take that one. All right. And I'll take this one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is a technique that I learned via an internet class that I took from a wonderful artist. Her name is uh, Golden uh, in Australia. So, you know, we're so advantaged today that we can take advantage of uh, the workings and the genius of, of artists that are very far away. So I took a series of classes with her about painting on fabric and then quilting over that painting. And then I had to learn how to do freeform quilting where the machine 
you let the machine stay in one place and you move the fabric around and create the designs by the stitches. And then many times I painted over it again. But I did a few of these and I loved it and I enjoyed it and I went back to painting again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. Which one? Well, this is the only other one that I saved from 50 years ago. And this one, if you can see it okay, I hope. Um, maybe I need to make it lower. It, it's not the same style at all as the work that I do now. Um, and I haven't done any still lifes since January in this period. But this really, I've loved it so much. I've always kept it in a prominent place in my home. So now I'm thinking that I, I need to explore mm -hmm. abstract uh, still lifes and abstract landscaping. And you're getting some new oh, paint. It arrived today. Oh, good. Oh, my goodness. I got, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I got these new paints that a wonderful, wonderful artist and friend, Terry Ahmed from Cape May. And Terry came to the show and she recommended to me that I try using a new brand, a brand of oil-based, don't have colors, but somehow or other the genius of the person who created these paintings, these paints, um, they're washable in soap and water. You don't have to use turpentine with all the problems that that brings environmentally. So um, I'm so excited and I just can't wait to start working in them. So, in and you can paint out all of them acrylic mm -hmm. as these are, mm -hmm. and you can paint over the dried acrylic with these oil paints. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn so, more. So I'm, you could actually take even a painting you've already done. I'm planning to do that. And have some more fun with it. Yes. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, I'm so excited. This is like opening it all up again. Yeah. It's like restarting. Yeah. Yeah. Another exploration. Yes. Get your headlamp ready, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> such a wonderful adventure. I hope yes. that everybody who's watching or listening, just do it. Whatever it is that touches your heart, just do it. And don't worry about age. I'm 82. I'm moving fast. You can move it. You can do it. Just you just have to want to. You have to want to mm -hmm. and you have to listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. My father always said there isn't anything you can't do that you want to do. You know? You have to want it. Yeah. 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 You have to want it badly enough. Yeah. to say, okay, I have three young kids mm -hmm. and the law school's in Philadelphia mm -hmm. and there's no way to get there except driving three hours a day or taking all these trains, and I took trains to Philly, is you make it happen. My yeah. kids learned how to cook. Mm -hmm. They learned independence. They learned family support. Mm -hmm. And I think that we all grew from it. And the payoff was huge. It in was. In the long run. It was. Yeah. I was not destined for a life of being a homemaker and mm -hmm. playing the role of the doctor's wife. Mm -hmm. I was miserable thinking about that in my yeah. life. Yeah. I knew this. This was almost a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. I had to do it. Yeah. It was good that you took that phone call that day. Yes, yes. Yeah. So are there any of these that you would like to talk about that I could uh, focus in on? Well, this one mm -hmm. up here Okay, is I'm going to pick really, up the camera. Okay, I, I don't even remember what we called it. Uh, uh, we called it Wild Woman. Yes, yes. I love this one particularly because of the energy that it has. It, to me, is, um, I think about the beginning of the world, the Big Bang Theory, and it really, that, those thoughts really have uh, found 
a place up there and down here in this one right below it and in many many others of my paintings and in many ways i think this whole series that i've done in this paint in this period are that same thought mm -hmm. that same concern mm -hmm. what are we doing to the earth is it going to explode is this the beginning of the end of democracy in america all of these thoughts and deep concerns are are coming out in my paintings that i think reflect the um, the concept of the thoughts that i have the worries that i have about what we're doing environmentally what we're doing socially to the earth and to our democracy and it comes out in my paintings yes it does and we want to say thank you thank you thank you for giving us this opportunity to visit with you today and we apologize for the bad camera work judy's at fault there but uh, we're so honored to have your work here and we want people to know that you will be bringing more work in and that you have your very own space on our I wall. I have a wonderful studio that yes. my husband built for me. Mm -hmm. It has a sink, which is a real blessing. Yes. And a magnificent window wall. Yes. So there are lots so of other creations. Can come and share my space. Very nice. Yeah. So thank you, Arlene. And we look forward to sharing Arlene's work and the work of many other artists who will be here at Nashville North Studios. And our next show coming up is Patchwork Life. So stay tuned. Lots more art coming your way at Nashville North Studios. And once more, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Judith.